What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Also hit the like button, that really helps me out. In this video, what I wanna cover are some common carburetor issues. And also I'm gonna kinda of go over the fuel system 101. But two carburetor issues that I see uh, common are, um, you know, the engine will crank over and you're spraying starter fluid spray or carb cleaner into the air filter and it will run only on that fuel. Well, that lets you know that you have battery, you have spark, it's running. We're gonna cover that. And then also, if it runs only on choke, and you're, you're in, but it stalls out and dies when you release the choke. And then I wanna cover the issues of how to, or cover how you can prevent uh, these things from happening how to store it properly and how to you know just avoid those issues altogether. And then I'm gonna also show you some just helpful tips and tricks in case you need to replace your carburetor, things of that nature. But again, hit that like button and let's get started. All right, first let me show you this engine here. It would only start and run as long as I was spraying some carb cleaner or starter, fruit, starter spray into the intake. If it's running like this, we know we have a fuel delivery problem. It's not getting fuel. It runs fine when I'm delivering fuel. So chances are it's this fuel shutoff valve. First you want to check that plug there. Make sure it's not burnt. Take a test light. Make sure you're getting power to it. But a lot of times these things are gunked up and you could free it up by spraying some WD-40 in there. And you can see how it's kind of really slow to rebound i'm working it back and forth to kind of clean it up so this customer brought this unit in it wouldn't start up and all i did was remove this starter uh, the fuel shut off solenoid freed it up and now that i got it cleaned up i'm going to show you when i turn the key turn it on turn it off turn it on off making sure it's rebounding nice and fast. So now I can reinstall it to the carburetor and just be aware all the gas is going to drain out of the carburetor when you remove this. So I'm going to re reinstall it, tighten it up, plug it back up, and it will start up just fine. as long as that solenoid is working like I just showed you this engine is now cranking up fine this took about five minutes to fix all right guys let's say that you're in a pinch and you need to get your mower running or you can't find this part these sometimes cost almost nearly as much as a new carburetor Let's just say you're in a pinch and you need to get it going. You can grind uh, this off and it will let fuel. This is also helpful if, I mean, if the solenoid is just not working at all or whatever, you can grind that plastic cap off or grind it. Sometimes they have a metal needle at the, at the end. You can grind it off, but it's going to let fuel go into your, um, flood your carburetor, possibly flooding the engine so if you do that you need to install a fuel shutoff valve so like on my mower here have this little um, Husqvarna and I have a fuel shutoff valve right there and I also have a uh, fuel shutoff solenoid there but if I was in a pinch and that thing quit working uh, or couldn't get the part in time I need to get this thing going. I could grind that little uh, end off of there. And especially if you have a, a mower that has the tank where it's above the carburetor. So in other words, it's kind of like a gravity fed uh, fuel line. You're definitely going to need to have a fuel shutoff valve installed so you can just turn that valve and shut it off. Now, this mower has... Uh, just like a lot of mowers, it has a um, fuel pump here, and the way it 
operates is through um, crank crank case pressure so basically this line right here that's coming in from the engine crankcase is what operates the fuel pump and then basically it's got a fuel line going down here uh, right there from the bottom of the tank going through my fuel filter goes to the pump and then comes right on over to the carburetor right here now a lot of times if it's running rough um, or hesitating what I like to do is I take some carb cleaner and I will spray around all these gaskets uh, right where the intake manifold or all the carburetor gaskets all around and if it changes the way it runs when you hit a certain area chances are you have a vacuum leak so you want to do that um, if it, especially if it's running rough after you've installed a new carburetor uh, spray all those um, gaskets and guys if you're replacing the carburetor just some tips just take your time take some photos maybe take some video as you're taking things apart to help you remember how to put it back together and then also I'm going to show you um, if you ever need if certain models when you're replacing a carburetor you might need to remove one of these studs to clean away the gasket material I'm going to show you a very uh, useful tool to make that a lot easier. For example, I was working on this John Deere Gator. I needed to install this new carburetor and it has these long studs right there going into the head. And you can see this gasket material that I'm needing to remove. I already, I already removed one stud. Now right here, uh, this metric stud remover set from Matco. You can get it from any brand. I'm not sponsored by Matco or anything. But they have stud remover tools like this one. And they work really great. You put it on that stud. It works a lot better than put, trying to put a double nut system on there. You can, As you turn it, you can put your ratchet on there. You turn it and it grips that stud really well. Let me show you here. I just put this 3 h ratchet on here. And as you turn it to in the loosening position, it grips that stud and then breaks it loose. And you can get away with doing like putting a nut, two nuts on those threads, but chances are you're going to mess up those threads. And this grips it really well. See how I can rock it back and forth? So I can remove that stud and it just makes it so much easier now to clean away this gasket material, which is very important to get a good seal. And this is the SR-101A metric stud remover kit, or remover set. Really like this set, very nice. All right, so next let's talk about another common issue this thing will only run with it in the choke position. You'll notice it runs badly as I take the choke off. And it runs good or runs with it in the choke but wants to die when I release the choke. That's the sign that you need a new carburetor. So once you install the new carburetor, I'd highly recommend you replace that fuel filter but you see right here after I replaced it runs properly now and will spit and sputter after it's warmed up and I put it in the choke position after it's warmed up it will sputter but runs fine when I release the choke and again if you're going to replace that carburetor replace that fuel line I'm, I'm sorry blow out the fuel lines clean out the fuel tank and replace the fuel filter as well. So now let's talk about how to avoid these issues altogether. All right. Now these issues often happen due to the um, either dirt getting into the fuel system, and in that case, what you need to do is keep an eye on that fuel filter for dirt. Change the fuel filter often, 
you know, give a close inspection there. I can see some dirt in this one right here. And so um, if you have a fuel tank where you can remove that cap and shine a flashlight down inside of it, where mine, I can't really see the bottom of it, but I could take some compressed air, blow all this sand away and remove this tank ventilation right here and shine a light. And if you can get like a fuel, a fuel pump extractor to suck out all that dirt, that's the best way to do it. Also, keep an eye on these um, fuel cap gaskets. These often will kind of deteriorate over time, especially if you're running gas that has ethanol in it. And what happens then? It's not getting a good seal. And it's basically, as you're running the mower and it's creating negative pressure, basically a vacuum on the tank, it's sucking in dirt and debris into the fuel tank. It's eventually going to get past that fuel filter and into your carburetor. Now, if you're about to store that mower for a prolonged period of time, what you want to do is add some fuel stabilizer to the fuel and you want to run that, fu that treated fuel through the carburetor. All right. And then you want to basically, if you don't have a fuel shutoff valve, ideally, if you do have a fuel shutoff valve, just let the engine run until it dies, until it's starved for fuel. If you don't have a fuel shutoff valve, what you can do is first disconnect the negative um, terminal on the battery. And then what you want to do is unplug the plug from your fuel shutoff solenoid, remove, remove this fuel shutoff solenoid, and let all the gas drain out. Basically, you want to get all that gas out of the carburetor and whatever gas is in there you want to have that gas already have run gas through it that has been treated with fuel stabilizer and guys real quick a, good, a quick way to check if this fuel pump is working is disconnect the line right there going right there to the carburetor and um, turn it off over into a bucket or a safe area uh, because if it's working, it should push out a, a lot of gasoline just as you're cranking the motor over, just in the start pos starting position, it should um, push out a lot of gas. If it's not, you either have a restriction in the line somewhere, something's clogged up, or um, your pump isn't working. And sometimes on other mowers that a lot of times this fuel pump is, is mounted right above the um, valve cover gasket on a lot of two cylinder engines. And it's a really thin little uh, vacuum line hose um, that would kind of replace this thicker one that I have here on this mower. mower. Um, if that's cracked or has a hole in it or something deteriorated, dry rotted, that could prevent it from working as well. And guys, if you can run ethanol free gas, that's the best thing you can do to prolong the fuel line life. This ethanol treated or ethanol contaminated gas, in other words, deteriorates rubber fuel lines from the inside out. So the outside of that line might look fine, but it'll basically in other words almost like dry rot from the inside out um, it kind of just deteriorates them pretty bad these motors aren't really um, these older carbureted motors don't like ethanol treat you know gas that has ethanol in it so if your area has ethanol free use that um, and this stuff will it'll help you not only for your mower, but like for your generator do the same thing um, Ethanol free drain that carburetor run it out of gas. You won't have any problems So guys that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I uh, hope it helps you out if you're having some issues and Maybe this will help you prevent or from having some of those issues do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Also hit the like button. And in the comments, let me know what type of videos you guys wanna see, what kind of other videos that you like that I'm doing. 
I love hearing the feedback. And also, um, I want to thank all the members. Uh, consider becoming a member. You're going to get early access to videos. You're also going to get exclusive videos. You're going to get a badge by your name when you make a comment, and your comment will be answered. So thanks for watching, uh, and hit that like button on your way out. I'll have more videos like this coming soon, guys. Thanks.